Hello Nigeria, wake up and smell the coffee. Well, today we're going to be focusing on coffee. Did you know that coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world? And that is second to crude oil. Sadly, 90% of this commodity is imported in Nigeria. So how do we bridge this gap? How do we ensure that locally produced coffee is provided so that the farmers and those who are into the business can have more opportunities in the industry? Well, that would be our focus today on the show. Welcome to SME Health. My name is Omobolanli Adeshi. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll dive right in. Coffee is a tropical tree crop belonging to the Rubia K family and genus Café, which is one of the largest tropical plant families. As a matter of fact, coffee is a native African plant that has spread over the Indian Ocean to Madagascar, Sudan, the Comoros, Mauritius, and Reunion. Café Arabica L, generally known as Arabica Coffee, and Café Canfora A, widely known as Robusta coffee, are two of the 124 species of coffee that are commercially grown for the manufacturing of coffee beverage. The crop is grown in 14 of 36 Nigerian states, covering over 5,000 hectares of land. The producing states are Kogi, Ondo, Taraba, Abia, Ogun, Ekiti, Kwara, Oyo, Cross River, Belchi, Edo, Akwaibom, Delta, and Plateau, except for the Mambila Plateau in Taraba State, certain areas of the Obudu Ranch in Cross River State, and the Joss Plateau in Plateau State. C. robusta is primarily grown in Nigeria. Robusta accounts for 94%. C. Arabica accounts for 4% and C. Iberica accounts for 2% of Nigeria's coffee production. Coffee is one of the major cash crops constituting the backbone of the Nigerian economy before the emergence and re-emergence of petroleum oil. The crop has been a source of income generation contributes to the socio-economic value of the household and also leads to the development of the producing states, particularly Kogi State, that is known to be one of the major producers of Robusta coffee in Nigeria. Despite all these signs and the fact that coffee demand is on the rise in the world, coffee production in Nigeria is experiencing a downward trend and fluctuating over the period between 1961 and 2022. According to Raw Materials Research and Development Council statistics, about 1.5 billion naira worth of coffee products were imported into Nigeria between 2010 and 2015. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, 0% of coffee output was reported during the first four months of 2015 and no export data was recorded during the first seven months of the same year. Africa countries like Nigeria produced 174,000 tons of coffee, earning $1 billion for its exports.
With me right here is Princess Adeyi Katekena. She is founder Happy Coffee Nigeria. Hello, welcome to SME Hub. It's nice to meet you. Thank you for having me on. So tell us what exactly drove you into this business of coffee making? <laughs> I like the word you use, drove, but nothing actually drove me. Um, when I was in school in America, I studied, you know, did a lot of work, but I was very intrigued by um, a company called Starbucks. I had read a book about how they founded the company. One of the things we had to do in our business school was to look at companies around the world and see how they have created sustainable models that have lasted, you know, generations. So I happened to come across a book called Pour Your Heart Into It by the founder Howard Schultz on how we started Starbucks and how Starbucks transformed the coffee culture as we know it currently. Starbucks has nearly 30,000 stores globally. Mm. So I was intrigued by that and I told myself if I ever had an opportunity in the future, I would start a coffee company and here we are. Here today. we are. So tell us, what does it cost to go into this business? What, the skills, the cost implication and all of that? You know, I always tell people that the cost starts with the passion to even want to go into this industry. Um, it's not popular. I know that a lot of Nigerians only have access to a certain type of coffee. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that there is more to it. And like you rightly said, coffee is the second most traded commodity in the world after oil. If you look at economies like Brazil, the GDP is majorly on coffee and many other South American companies. And a lot of the work that and they're doing is also created by the model that Starbucks and many other big brands around the world started. So for me, I always say that the starting point is from the passion wanting to go into the business the costs vary depending on what part of the value chain you want to find yourself so there is not one size fit all kind of um, economic value to coffee okay so maybe we should talk about the value chain what yeah. are the different job opportunities business opportunities in this industry absolutely so if you look at it um, the coffee value chain is very extensive however it's also very simple like many of our other coffee value uh, value chains across the agricultural sector so we start from the farming obviously to the processing of the coffee and then for us in the coffee industry you go into what we call the roasting which you can also smell in our coffee shop yeah so you roast the coffee then you can either distribute as a wholesaler or a retailer and then you can actually move also into opening coffee shops. Okay. So that's so do you do all of this or do you specialize in a particular? You know, thank you for that very interesting question. I know that when we started, um, I know that one, there was one thing that I knew that we wanted to create a coffee brand. Because if you look at Africa as a whole and our continent, we don't have a lot of coffee brands that are creating sustainable brands for the African consumer and the African palate. So what we wanted to do out of the door was to create a brand other than the ones that you know. Secondly, we wanted to create coffee-centered solutions because we realized that the gap in the value chain has to do with creating solutions across the value chain. So we want to participate in seeing how we can use locally grown coffee to create coffee solutions for the value so chain. does that mean you participate or you're involved Majorly. in all the so right now we participate in the retail and distribution and roasting eventually we're going to backward integrate into farming um, because it's also needed because of the state of the Nigerian coffee. Exactly, industry. because statistics reveals that 90% of coffee is still imported. Absolutely. How do we deal with that? So that means that um, majority of the coffee that is being grown is going to waste because they are minimal off-takers. Uh -huh. So it's very necessary. So it's, the problem is not with the farming or the production, it's with the of consumption. Taking. Yes, so it's not even with the consumption, it's with of taking the coffee and creating products out of it because if you're imported if you're importing coffee that we drink okay. that means the coffee in the nigerian farm is wasting so apparently it's like the crude that we export and yeah. then we import Thank petrol you. exactly so for us as a brand for the past seven years we have literally never imported coffee into our business we, every coffee that we use in our company is sourced from local farms here in nigeria and then we have created this brand and many other products out of it so tell us about your farm what's what's it about so we don't have a farm yet we have registered a farm that we will start in lagos in a couple of maybe uh, next year that will be the first right that will be lagos. the first yes in Interesting. Lagos. because 22 states in nigeria can grow coffee about 19 are growing presently including most of the south south southwest and the middle belt states 
um, which is very interesting. And interesting, also, but the fact that it's going to waste is a problem. I mean, you can understand that because looking at what has happened to the agricultural sector as a whole, um, it's still the same thing that's been going on. We have these raw materials, but we don't create products and services from it. Uh -huh. We export our raw material and then they take it and sell it back to us at a certain price. And um, so those are the kind but of... But isn't, isn't that a challenge considering the fact that you now have to pay more to get this to the finished product? Absolutely. Um, and also because there is not a lot of um, ingenuity around the value chain as a whole. What that means is, gov as we speak, there's no national policy that protects coffee uh -huh. in the whole country. Um, this, the only policy is all still in works. It hasn't, okay. you know, it's not into a law. Mm. Secondly, um, if you look at how coffee is, you know, across the world and you look at Nigeria as the back end, you realize that the work that needs to be done is very extensive and it needs a lot of financing. And, but, but because coffee isn't popular, the private sector hasn't really embraced financing coffee projects in Nigeria. So most times entrepreneurs like myself have to continually look for support from outside the country mm. to so, develop you know, an, a Nigerian industry.